Hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I am happy to introduce Veronica Romney today, and she's had quite a career journey, and she's going to enlighten us on a lot of things. But the one thing that really stands out for me is that she's going to help us stand taller, feeling like leaders in all aspects of our lives. But we're going to talk specifically about marketing. As you all know, for the past couple of years, the great resignation has been a hot topic. And with that, a lot of people have left corporate. Maybe they were in marketing, maybe they were not in marketing, but marketing is the end all be all when it comes down to entrepreneurship and being able to scale your business to whatever level you want to scale it. If you're currently at five figures, you want to get to six figures, you're six figures, you want to get to seven, or if you're at seven and you want to get to eight. All of the strategies we're going to talk about today are going to help you be able to do just that so that you can follow your dreams and accomplish those goals that you set out to accomplish when you did resign from corporate and stepped into the world of entrepreneurship. So without further ado, Veronica Romney, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thank you. I'm super excited to be here. Thanks for having me. You're in my opinion, a little bit famous because you've been on the stage with Tony Robbins. How do you get much bigger than that? I became a Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi speaker. We were out of like 650 applicants. We made it, I made it to the top five, top six in December of 2019. And then March, 2020 happened for all of us. So it went from speaking on physical in-person stages to very quickly pivoting and doing virtual workshops and being trainers and coaches to these like multi-day virtual experiences that has now changed the whole industry for the good and also for a variety of different reasons. But like, yes, I was a part of that pivot with Tony and Dean during that time. Yeah, it's exciting. So you've had a lot of experience when it comes to marketing, but before we dive into that, I would love for you to tell just the listeners just a little bit more about yourself. And that was like a highlight. That was really cool, (laughs) but you have such an interesting past and your role as an entrepreneur is something that is, is really innate to you. You were almost born into it. So just give the listeners a little bit of background about who you are and what led you to where you are on your journey today. Yeah. Okay. So number one, I think it should be said that I have this belief that entrepreneurs birth other entrepreneurs. So my parents are two Cuban immigrants who came to this country and started an air conditioning company over 30 years ago. And I'm the oldest. So I was front row to the highs and lows of my parents figuring out how to run a business in a new country with a new language from like ground up. So I feel like I was born with that kind of grit And I always knew that entrepreneurship would be a part of my story one day, but I just didn't know when. And my parents also were like education, like that's the means in which you can achieve your goals is to get educated because they had to forfeit their education to leave their country. And so I knew that when I went to school, I graduated at 20 years old. My first job out the gate was ancestry.com as their email marketing manager. I'm like this 20 year old deploying emails to like millions and millions of people. And then from there, it's just taken twists and turns from like a more corporate marketing structure. And then at the height of my corporate run, I ran a department that was like 21 million a year over six or seven different marketing products, some that were done for you services. A lot of them were software product-based. And then it really wasn't until I had my first son, that calling or that voice, that Moana voice inside of me that was calling me to entrepreneurship got loud because I just couldn't really justify centering my life around my job, not with a new baby. And it was time for me to center my whole world around this family unit and not the other way around where the family circled around the job. And I think obviously the pandemic made everybody reassess their priorities as well. And being forced to now work from home, you realize actually I like my family and I want to be with my family more often. And so now that people are trying to go back to the office, they're like, I don't want to do that. I don't want to go back to a 45 minute commute. I don't want to go back to not seeing my family, which I, at first we we're like, we're spending way too much time with our families. And now we're like, no, actually I want to be, and I want that freedom to do what I want with who I want. So I did the same thing. I, before the pandemic, I jumped into entrepreneurship full-time 2017 had an agency, sold it, became a Tony Robbins, Dean Graziosi speaker, did my own virtual workshops, my own online courses, worked for a couple of different people, went and worked for Boss Babe, if you know them as their chief uh-huh. of staff for several months. 
And then a year ago now, I've gone back into entrepreneurship full-time, helping scaling organizations build the most dream marketing teams possible. So that's a little bit of what I do and how I got here. I love that. And this is a, I'm sure a lot of the listeners can relate to this and I know you will too. I, we were walking through the airport the other day. I'm down in Florida listeners for those who don't know, but I'm down in Florida with my daughter at our house here. And we were walking through the airport and there's a mother, father, and a daughter. And the daughter was probably maybe 15, 16, something like that. And they're sitting there at this little table eating. And as we're walking by, I hear the mother say, but when I'm with you, I'm all about you. I'm all in. And I thought to myself, oh my gosh, this is a working mom, Mm. a career mom who's gone all the time. So super busy. And her child feels like she doesn't have time for her. And I was like, at that moment in time, I was like, thank you, God, that Mm. I have had the opportunity to work for myself and raise my kids and be there for every single moment and didn't have to miss out. There were times, of course, but I think it's so important. So I love that, that you brought that into the conversation because I think it is, I think it's so important. And I think it's a good way that, like you said, entrepreneurs birth entrepreneur. And Mm -hmm. I think that it's a good way for us to show our kids that, Hey, the sky is the limit. And if you put your nose to the grindstone, you're going to be able to accomplish whatever you want to accomplish and live the life you want to live and be hands-on with your family or doing the things that you want to do. So super awesome. So now that we've talked about that, let's talk about marketing and scaling so Mm -hmm. that we can continue on this path and what people who are, no matter the level of your business, I personally believe that In order to scale, you have to have a team around you. You cannot scale if you're not the CEO of your business. If you are sitting in the place of doing all the back-end stuff, you're not in a position to put yourself out there and sell and market in a way that's going to build human connection, relationships, trust, and convert to sales. So let's talk about that. Sure. Yeah. I think it's a fair point. So something that I often say is you can start a business alone, but you can't scale it on your own. And it's very true just because one, it's extremely lonely. Let's just start with that having, and I've had those periods of complete solopreneurship where it was like me, myself, and I, and there's a lot of freedom that comes with that because you don't feel like you have to feed anyone else, so to speak. You're just really just taking care of yourself, which can be less pressure when you're getting out the gate. And I think that should be honored and you shouldn't have to shame yourself for that. Like, Hey, I'm just taking care of me and just figuring out like getting my footing But then very quickly, you'll realize, I feel like I'm just like talking to myself. You're almost like in a padded room. It's just (laughs) you, yourself and I. So then there will come the itch where you're like, I want more and I want to impact more people and I want to serve more people, but I want to do it, but not by myself. I would like to do it with people that I enjoy working with and going to work with, even if it's remote, even just to have that companionship. Because we as human beings are social creatures. We want companionship. We want to be surrounded by people of like-mindedness or similar goals and aspirations. Like it, it really lights us up. And so that was certainly my journey. Now I did marketing for myself the wrong way. And this is because I went from, like I said, at the peak of my entrepreneurial run, I was managing a very large department with lots and lots of personnel, but that was a part of even bigger organization where we had 40 products. And now I believe this company is worth 2 billion. So like, it's a big hundreds of employees. And I was with Ancestry.com when we went from private to public. So like, I've only ever known the gladiator kind of Coliseum type of arena. And then when you start in entrepreneurship, you're like, oh, I'm just going to recreate what I know. So you get a W-2 and you get a W-2 and you get these benefits and you get the perk and you get the gym membership. I'm like, what am I doing? So that's, that can be, especially if you're a listener or someone who's, is, did the jump. If they did the jump in the great resignation, and they're doing everything on their own, don't do what I did, which was to like emulate or model a corporate structure because that's not your reality, but that's something that you just know and feel comfortable in. So like I had to learn that the hard way where I like said yes to too many things and just write, recreate something that wasn't pertinent to what I was trying to do at that time. So you have to like, when you're getting started, you got to be scrappy. My goal is just that you're not stupid, like scrappy, not stupid is the goal with your marketing efforts. And that just takes some nuances. So for example, what's scrappy and what's considered stupid. So scrappy 
is deciding I'm not going to do all the social media channels. I'm going to pick one major microphone and go all in and master it. So whether it's Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, I don't care, depending on who you're serving and what you're offering, one is going to be better than another. Scrappy is going all in with one, finding, for example, let's say a social media manager who's more expert in the Instagram lane and saying, okay, I'm going to allocate a couple hundred dollars a month towards this person who can help me gamify this platform. Stupid is when I see people go, I'm going to give money to Instagram, TikTok, when they're doing lots of things and not doing any of them particularly well. And it's a C minus average across the board. That's what we don't want to do. But I can understand again, in trying to emulate people that you see because they're on all the platforms. There's the Gary V's they're everywhere. You feel like you have to be everywhere too. And that's just not true. I love that so much. I always refer back to my five C's of personal branding because Mm -hmm. as entrepreneurs, we are personal brands. There's no question about it. We are what is going to determine whether or not people buy from us. They're, you know, what they think, feel, and say about us is the most important thing. It's that perception that they, that we create, that they have of us. And when we first start out, if we don't have clarity on who our people are, who are those people that we are meant to serve and that we truly can serve and still feel fulfilled ourselves, that's the key. It's not putting yourself out there to attract everyone, because if you're trying to attract everyone, you're going to attract no one, at least no one that's going to allow you to be happy and joyful and feel successful because you're going to be so frustrated and annoyed because they're not your true people. So I love that you say that. So really identifying who those people are and where are they hanging out? Mm -hmm. And maybe when I say hanging out, I don't mean 24 seven on a platform. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about where are they searching for information? Are they hashtag gurus and they're, they're searching for everything by hashtags or are they searching on Google by keywords, key phrases? So know Mm -hmm. where your people are, how to find them. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. It's interesting. Cause let's say somebody who's listening is like, I'm an entrepreneur. This is day zero ground zero. What do I do? I'm like, okay, <laughs> number one, before we spend $10,000 on a fancy website, you don't need that before any of that. Literally your first several thousands of dollars will come from your contacts on your phone. Like literally I cannot tell you how much we undervalue what I would consider and label relationship marketing, right? There's search marketing, there's social media marketing, there's paid marketing. There's a lot, there's tons and tons of marketing platforms or marketing channels and activities, but the number one to start with always and forever is your relationships. It's the relationship marketing that will get you off the ground. They're the ones that are going to either validate your offer or not. They're the ones that are either going to give you feedback or not. It's your first degree contacts. And if you're listening and you're like, yeah, but I hate sales. It just makes me feel like, oh, like I, I got to call somebody on my phone or I got to text somebody that I know. Hey, I'm doing this thing. And do you want to talk about it? Like that just gives you like the sweats. Then can I tell you my secret? <laughs> Because I, I really struggled with sales, even the feeling of sales. And it's funny because my husband is a salesperson and I married a sales guy, but the number one salesperson that I've ever had in my entire life has been my mom and my dad. (laughs) So even if you feel uncomfortable doing sales, just telling people who believe in you, love you, could care less what you're actually offering because they'll just stand behind you at all times. Those are some of the best salespeople of my life. It was my dad. It was my mom. It was my spouse. It was my best friend. It was my neighbor. It was the people that knew me, knew my heart, knew my integrity and my values that told everybody that they knew about me because they just wanted to help me. And when that happens, what I want you to do is I want you to pay very close attention to how they describe you to other people, because you're going to get a sense of your branding very quickly. What do people actually say about me? Oh, she's the queen of execution. Let's write that down. Let's see if that's available on GoDaddy, right? Pay very close attention to how your loved ones, your friends, your colleagues, your peers actually recommend you or talk about you, because that can be the source of a lot of those initial things that I would consider branding and marketing myself. Yeah. I love that so much. And I always say that too, that it's funny, the five C's are coming up, but the last one is community Mm. that I always teach. And it is relationship marketing and it's starting out with the community you already have in existence. They already trust you. Like you said, they already respect you. They already trust you. So when you tell them what you're doing, yeah. And you're excited about it. They're ultimately going to be excited for you and they're going to spread the word for you. I always say email marketing is so touch and go with the GDPR and privacy and all of that. But if you send out an announcement to all of your friends and family and you say, Hey, 
this is what I'm doing. I'm starting mm -hmm. out. I would love for you to join me on this journey, but if you don't want to, that's okay. Unsubscribe, no feelings hurt, but mm -hmm. I want you to know what I'm doing. So you can tell other people about it too. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how, like you said, that is where your roots start. Like that's where everything is planted and grows from there. And it is really empowering too, to then hear people say things about you because it, it boosts your confidence and it helps you that you're on the right track. So if you're struggling with doubt and thinking, Oh, I'm not sure I should be doing this. And again, listen, like Veronica said, to what people are saying, because that really, and truly does grow you as a person, but as an entrepreneur. Yeah. And so at this point of my career, I have conversations with people who are seven figures ambitious and like ambitiously frustrated because they want to be at eight figures. So like even in, in those rooms and those masterminds and those groupings of entrepreneurs, it's still a lot of the same complaints or sentiments or frustrations or imposter syndrome. A lot of that's still around where they're still questioning, have I found my thing? Have I planted my flag in the right place? Am I attracting the right audience? Which is really interesting because the revenue just because you've amassed a certain amount of revenue doesn't mean that the security and the confidence that you have behind what you do is a guaranteed. You mastering and having confidence behind what you do and why you do it at zero is as critical to master now because when you get to seven figures and you haven't found that security, it actually can be 10 times worse because now everybody's watching you figure it out versus right now, no one's really watching because you're still the best kept secret. So I just want, I want to give context that like, don't, don't undermine yourself. Don't tell yourself that you're too small. Like now such a beautiful time to find your footing and to find your place and to find what it is that you do and what makes you special and your unique selling proposition and all of those things, because it's these really critical, what you would probably categorize as a small win. But to me, they're the biggest wins that you could possibly have is to know yourself because to know yourself now is better to try to find yourself when it's a bigger, bigger platform and more eyeballs are watching you wrestle with that. So just give yourself a lot of grace and a lot of credit that this is a really beautiful time to find yourself. So you don't have to worry about that later. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I love that so much. And I think we do lose sight of that. I think when we're just starting out and we, like you said, when you start out and you are completely solo, we do lose sight of that because we're in the trenches. We're like trying to dig ourselves out and figure things out on our own. So I think that's another bonus too. If you're trying to set something up, if you're trying to launch, hire someone that can at least give you that guidance on how to launch effectively or mm -hmm. just the little nuances, like how to set up an EMA marketing strategy. And we know how important that is. Or like you said, to come up Instagram strategy, Instagram is going to be your platform of choice, but mm -hmm. we don't know what we don't know. And so it's really important if you can tap into another resource, another human being so that you don't feel isolated and you don't feel like you're digging it out, digging out of that trench alone. Yeah. And that's to your point in your C's, right? The five C's when you start with your community and you see what your community is resonating with, it's one big focus group. That's how I look at it. Like even when I left Boss Bay a year ago, that's the first month of me even leaving Boss Bay was the exact same thing. I went back to my community. I'm like, guess what? I'm no longer working at Boss Bay. I'm actually doing this. And I'm helping other people with their team structure and architecture. And I'm going to be a fractional chief of staff. Do you know anybody who needs some services like that, that they can't pay full time for an executive, but could really benefit from having somebody who's gone before them. And it was there that everybody was starting to give me that feedback, give me those wins, giving me that, what was resonating with them with some of my messaging. Now that I have that win, when I go to social media, when I go to the Instagram, when I go on a podcast, like I know the things I want to talk about. I know the lines or the hooks or the angles that really resonate because I already did that work with my own community, for example, even at that scale. So I think to your point of when should I invite people to the party? When is it time to invite people to the party? And this is a really good conversation because I don't care if you're at $0, hundred thousand dollars or a hundred million right dollars. One of the KPIs that I want you to always keep in mind and never lose sight of is what I call the visionary KPI. So visionaries, and again, it depends on the nature of your business, but every business should have what I say is a visionary KPI, which is basically the number of times that either you, if you're a face forward company, 
It's either the number of times that you or a representative of your company goes and speaks on behalf of the company's mission and vision. And you know, why, how many times, and are you tracking that? Like how many times this week did Veronica speak on behalf of the Rainmaker residency or her dream team architect services? Like how many times did I get a chance to tell the world about what it is that I do? And I don't qualify the KPI by saying it has to be a hundred people or more. No, it can be a very strategic lunch with one person. It could be me jumping on social media and doing a quick story. It could be me being on a podcast with the fabulous Robin. Like it can be those, it doesn't matter the size of audience that's listening. It's just how many times do I have the opportunity opportunity to tell people what I'm doing and measuring that week over week. I can see a direct correlation with sales going up or down when that visionary KPI is either being served or not served. And that is something that you should be tracking at all stages of your business. Oh, I love that so much. And when we talk about PR, that's it right there. That is your opportunity for free marketing. Mm -hmm. You are visible now to a much larger audience than you would have been visible to just posting on social media or just hanging out by yourself. Mm -hmm. And I love that you even incorporate in there, the social media posts, like Mm -hmm. you now have an opportunity because so Mm -hmm. many people And I, I would suspect, so when people are starting out and they're fearful, they, it's that, Oh, can I post this? Should I post this? What if somebody else is doing this already? Are they going to think I'm copying them? All those Mm -hmm. things that go through, and this is why mindset work is so important, but not only in the beginning, because I think as you grow, and I'm sure you've experienced this, it's that you're cruising right along, things are going well. And then all of a sudden it's, you hit a brick wall Mm -hmm. and those doubts hit you. And Mm -hmm. am I on the right path? And I just did a masterclass the other day where I was talking about this. It's so important to go back to what your purpose is periodically to know that you're on the right track to Mm -hmm. quiet those doubts. And I would think that as you're scaling up to, like you said, eight figures, you're going to have those doubts. So I want to ensure people that putting yourself out there is the only way that you can be visible. So if you're sitting there and you're afraid because you've hit a block and now somebody else is in your territory Mm -hmm. and they're doing what you're doing. And now you're intimidated, even though you've already built this, but you're starting to question, okay, I have all these clients, but where's the next one going to come from? Those doubts are going to hold you back. And if you're doubting that you're not going to be visible. And if you're not visible, then you're not front of mind. If you're not front of mind, you're not going to recruit clients or attract clients, I should say. Yeah, no, you're spot on. I even think about the seasonality of a calendar year. Like that's the summer slump or no by July. So like every entrepreneur is, oh, no, I'm like not making it in July. <laughs> it's because everybody's like outside of the house. No one's buying. So I, I say that because even in a calendar year, there's like seasonality and there'll be pockets where you feel like, oh no, like I can't close. I'm not selling anybody. And it's, it's not you. It's also think about right now, the year that we're in it's recession, it's inflation. It's a lot of that language that people are starting to get nervous and they're holding their money. Cause they're like, I don't know what to do. I'm paying $95 in the gas pump. So either you can shrink in those moments of slow, or you can do your atomic habits, 1% improvements. As long as you're constantly like looking at your business and yourself and seeing it as a work of art and looking at where I can do 1% improvement, a 2% improvement, and just making that gradual change and not stopping the improvements, even if no one's watching is where I think the discipline that comes in that holds you and can sustain you long-term is extremely valuable. But yeah, I think that you're making some really solid points about the mindset stuff. And I know people talk about that, like business is mindset, business is mindset. I had a conversation yesterday and I, I won't disclose who she is, the CEO, but I remember we were on the zoom call and she, at one point was like, can you stop recording? I was like, Oh, spill the tea. What's happening? (laughs) I got very excited. I'm like, Oh yeah. Tell me. And she's, I have been so deflated. I'm like, and you're like a queen. What do you mean? You're deflated. And she's a very successful CEO. She's like, there's somebody who's gaining a lot of traction. And like, they're straight up copying me, like straight up copying play by play to almost to the point where like, the name of her products, the name of her, whatever is only one word off kind of thing. I'm like, it's a pretty blatant ripoff and she's gaining traction. I went off and had a baby and she's gaining traction. I'm like stressing out. And I was like, listen, there will always be somebody, always be somebody who is either in your space, in your ocean, in the boat next to you, or straight out 
copying you. Like I was, I have hot jar, which is like a tracking software on my website. And I watched somebody two days ago, copy paste all of my copy. You could see them taking their mouse and copying all my copy. It will always happen. That cannot stop you. So a big tip that I gave her that I want to give to your listeners. If this is you, if you're like, there's already a social media manager, there's already podcast managers. There's already this business that does X, Y, Z that I want to do. That's not the measurement of whether or not you should get into business or do what you do. What can't be copied is your stories and your individuality. So can somebody copy your logo? Sure. Can somebody copy your tagline or your your epic paragraph on your sales page? Sure. But what they can copy is the personal stories. Like, why did you make that logo the way that it is? Because it actually is the same logo that I had for my wedding. Why do you have this brand color in your aesthetic? It's actually my favorite color and my son's favorite color. Or why, do, if you can just start leading with your, your personal stories behind the things and the choices that you made in your business. And that's the only thing that you shared on social media for a month or two months. Can I tell you the humanization and personalization that you give to your brand? Like nobody can rip off you. So if that happens or you feel stuck because there's, because you're in a red ocean of lots and lots of competition, get more personal. Not, I'm not talking about vulnerable. I'm not talking about like talking about the bikini wax that went wrong. I'm just talking (laughs) about the personal stories behind the choices that you made. Why do you, why is my brand colors in the Rainmaker residency that kind of clay rust red? It's because do you see the chair in my office and do you, and it's the colors that I personally wear. So you see what I'm saying? Just tell people why you came up with what you came up with and be personal about it. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I cannot agree with you more and it's almost okay. Mic drop shows over because that it really and truly is. And I think we get so sucked into that. And really what it, what is that the old saying? That old adage is copying is the greatest form of flattery. Mm-hmm. And I remember when my boys were little, they would, Joshua would be like, he's copying me. He copies me all the time. And I'm like, honey, that's because he wants to be like you. Yeah. He respects you. He loves you. He admires you. But so many times we look at that as something so negative and oh my gosh, from a business perspective, I can see where the brain goes immediately to, they're going to steal all my clients. But you also have to remember that if you are genuinely who you are, if you are adhering to your values and not wavering on your values, the people that you're meant to help, the people that are meant to purchase from you or hire you, those people are always going to be there because first of all, there's how many billions of people in the world, if there's an endless supply of opportunity, but if you do let yourself go down that track of, oh my gosh, this is so bad. And now I'm not worth as much as I was because somebody's copying me. If you cannot let those doubts come into play, because then you're not going to represent yourself the way you want them to see you. And when you doubt yourself, they're going to doubt you. They're not going to trust you. So I think that's so important that you brought that up and I love it so much. And I love bringing in the humanization and it really does come back to, and I know everybody gets tired of hearing about personal brand, but you are your business. Like Mm -hmm. when you're an entrepreneur or the CEO of your company, all of that comes into play and you have to tell your story and communicate with them. What makes you unique? Why you're zigging when everybody else is zagging. It's so important to bring that to the table. Otherwise you will lose people. Yeah. I just think about, it just makes me think about my favorite books. So two of my favorite books are just jam packed with some of the best stories. So if you think about, if you've read Bob Iger's book, which is the former CEO of Disney, the ride of a lifetime, every chapter is this epic Disney story or like epic. Oh, like the stories are so good. And then there's the learning from the story. And another book that I'm obsessed with is extreme ownership by Jocko and leaf. And it's stories from Iraq as Navy Mm. SEAL. And how that taught them to be leaders that, ex- that exhibit extreme ownership and humility in their leadering, like in the process of leading others. And every chapter is an epic story from what happened in Iraq. You're like, oh my gosh. So even at those levels, whether it's the military or CEO, of one of the biggest companies in the world, or it's you in your office talking about why you did what you did and how something taught you like a major lesson that you want to impart on somebody else. Like it's just the greatest form of service to tell your stories to me. Mm -hmm. And we can loop this all the way back to that visionary KPI Mm. because we are doing a disservice. If we're not showing up, we have a gift, we have a talent, we have a calling, we have a purpose. And if we are sitting under the umbrella hiding we aren't serving the people that need us and are just waiting for us to solve their problem. And if 
they're not going to find us if we are hiding. And so I love so much of this conversation. And I think we brought this in as marketing and that's what we were going to talk about. But if you're not showing up, you're not marketing. Yeah. (laughs) And if you're not looking at your key performance indicators, you're not marketing. This was so great. Any last minute, like this has to be it tips that you want to drop before we close out? Oh gosh, I think you and I were talking about before we went online or live that just like your listeners are across the whole spectrum of people who are still in corporate wanting to leave people who just left, people who are already hitting those six figures. And now they're, or they're wanting to scale way past that point. And I think the thing that just keeps coming back to me, especially from our conversation today, Robin is just like, what you master at zero will serve you at a hundred million, 200, like it's just these eternal truths, these eternal principles, these best practices. And I say that as a marketer, I cannot tell you how many times where as a marketer, I like will flex or think I'm so clever and then I'm too clever or too like, how do I put this? It's I've made it more complicated than it needed to be. Some of the best marketing, some of the best sales and branding is the simplicity of it. The simplicity of the story, the simplicity of one offer or one thing that you're going with and the why you're doing it and the person that you're serving, like don't serve everybody. So one person, one thing for one reason, like I can't, I just can't get that off my mind. And I say this because I work with business owners that have, I don't even know how many products and services where it's so messy and like the operational cost is so intense. And they felt like they had to do that. They felt like they had to have like 25 different products because they wanted to sell a new thing every single time to be different. It's hold on. I was with ancestry.com when they were privately held and we sold a subscription and now they're worth like, I don't like insane amount of money 50, over 15 years later, and they're still selling a subscription. Mm-hmm. Like just hold true to the simplicity of what you're wanting to do and go all in with that thing, as opposed to feeling like you have to chase two things or three things, because the man that chases two rabbits catches none, right? That proverb that I love honor the simplicity of what you're doing, why you're doing it and who you're doing it for. And that will always kind of be your guiding compass for sure. Oh my gosh. That is you guys, that is one of the best things that Veronica could have said to you because I, and I can tell you from experience in those times where you're feeling doubtful and you're feeling like, Oh my gosh, where are the clients coming from? You're at least for me, when that has happened in the past, I thought, Oh, maybe I should create another offer. All that does is muddy the waters. Mm. It makes you lose sight of clarity. It makes you lose sight of what your ultimate goals are. And the reality is if you have something where that, you know, is working, what's making an impact that it is serving other people. You don't need to add things on. You need to work on either your mindset or your visibility. And that is, oh my gosh, I'm so glad. So we're going to end on that note because that is so empowering. And I think no matter what level you are in your business, that is key to hold true to the simplicity of what you're meant to be doing and go back to that clarity. And if you are confused at all, and and you're getting the idea that you need to add this, that, and the other, Mm -hmm. or shift things around, go back to your purpose, go back to your values, your visions, your passions, and make sure you're aligned with those first. Okay. Veronica, where can the listeners find you? Ooh, so I'm literally everywhere as myself. So my website's veronicaromney.com, but on social media, it's just V Romney. So I would love to connect with anybody and have further conversation about any one of these topics. Yeah. Listeners, please go follow her. Her Instagram is great. She gives a lot of tips. She's there a lot and she's providing a ton of value. I encourage you to follow her. And if you know anyone who this episode could help, please share it, screenshot it, put it on your Instagram stories and head over to the show notes too, after you listen, because I will put the links to the books that Veronica recommended and the links to her website and all of that good stuff in the show notes as well, so that you can easily connect with her and learn more because you guys, this entrepreneurship journey, whether you have a team or you don't have a team, it's lonely. And let's face it, there are a lot of challenges. And because of the great resignation, I think there's, there's more and more people coming onto the scene. So we have those opportunities to be intimidated. So let's support each other and hold each other up and keep learning together. So I will see you guys next week.